Mino Akas and Shakas, it is me, Pu'ukani, with Pipeline of Paradise Radio, reporting for islandsportsmedia.com, your ultimate island-style sports magazine. Remaining at home for the second week straight at the Aloha Stadium, the University of Hawaii Warrior football team opened conference play against the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Hawaii came off a 66-7 blowout of Charleston Southern, while La Tech dropped a 13-12 decision to Southern Mississippi. The two teams have met eight previous times, with Hawaii holding the 6-2 advantage, including including a 24-14 victory in 2008. Hawaii quarterback Bryant Muniz came out firing to who else but his two favorite targets, wide receiver Greg Salas and slot back Kealoha Pilaris. Opening drive, Muniz connected with both receivers twice, Salas for 20 yards, followed up by a 19-yard catch, and Pilaris on two catches for nine yards apiece. Kicker Scott Enos capped off the six-minute, 14-second drive with a 36-yard field goal. Hawaii 3, La Tech 0. Back-to-back three and outs for La Tech gave Hawaii another opportunity to increase their lead. With just over two minutes left in the first, senior running back Cheesy Demute took the pigskin and bolted in from 27 yards out for his first career touchdown, 10-0 Hawaii. Hawaii's defense played tough with safety Mana Silva picking off Latte quarterback Tariq Hackme to end the first quarter, giving Hawaii's offense a fresh start in the second. Quarterback Muniz wasted no time going right back to his one-two punch, Salas and Pilaris. Muniz connected with Salas for 32 yards and two minutes later hit Polaris from 7 yards out and the touchdown. Warriors 17, Bulldogs 0. La Tech continued to struggle going 3 and out again and Hawaii took full advantage of the situation. 2nd and 16 from their own 34. Quarterback Muniz found Kealoha Polaris for a quick pass and off to the races he went, taking it 66 yards to the house. Still early 2nd quarter, it was Hawaii 24, La Tech 0. A few minutes later, safety Mana Silva recorded his 2nd INT in the first half, snatching a another one away from quarterback Hackney, but Hawaii failed to capitalize. The Bulldogs finally took a bite into Hawaii's lead with backup quarterback Ross Jenkins leading his team down the field and connecting with wide receiver Rich Casey for 32 yards out and the touchdown, but Moniz and Pilaris followed that up with three straight passes, advancing the ball down to Latex 19. Running back Alex Green then took the handoff but coughed up the ball, bringing their threat to an end. At halftime, it was Hawaii 24, Latex 7. Adjustment were made, and on the opening drive of the second half, La Tech came out with a strong balance attack, rushing and passing their way for 75 yards and the touchdown. Lead cut to 10 with Hawaii leading 24-14. The Warriors answered with a 75-yard drive and TD of their own, with quarterback Muniz connecting with four different receivers in a row, including the touchdown strike to Greg Salas for 19 yards, Hawaii 31, La Tech 14. Another three passes to Polaris from Muniz put the Warriors in field goal range as kicker Scott Enos came in and booted one from 24 yards out. Four minutes left in the third, it was Hawaii 34, La Tech 14. But the Bulldogs would continue to be tenacious, chewing away chunks of yards until quarterback Jenkins found wide receiver Tim Moulton for the eight-yard touchdown, 34-21 Hawaii. Redshirt freshman receiver Billy Ray Stutzman made his first career start in place of an injured Rodney Bradley and at the end of the third pulled in two passes from Muniz, one for 22 yards and the other for five. Hawaii looked to score again, but another fumble by Alex Green kept things interesting. Hawaii's defense was called upon to step up and make a big play, and just like last week's game against Charleston Southern, cornerback Jeremy Bryant answered the call with a pick on quarterback Jenkins, halting the Bulldogs at Hawaii's 29. Hawaii then put together a balanced surge of their own behind the efforts of Cheesy Demute and quarterback Muniz, both rushing their way down the field and, more importantly, eating up some time on the game clock. Pilaris put in another two passes and Greg Salas recorded the last TD of the night, scoring from 29 yards out. La Tech tried to make another comeback, but Hawaii's defense, as the saying goes, would bend but not break. The Warriors recorded solid efforts on defense by Corey Paredes, John Hardy Tuliao, Aaron Brown, Richard Torres, Lamitrius Davis, Pookela Ahmad, and Jeremy Bryant. All of them caused chaos for the Bulldogs all night long. The final score from Aloha Stadium, Hawaii Warriors 41, the La Tech Bulldogs 21. Huge night for quarterback Bryant Muniz as he finished with a career-high 532 yards and four touchdowns on 42 of 58 passing. Spirits were high at home, and after the game, Big Wave Dave caught up with some of the offensive stars of the night, including slotback Kealoha Pilaris, who set a new school record with 18 catches. Pilaris also finished with a career-high 217 yards receiving. Hello, you had a breakout game tonight. You seem to be playing with, uh, with an extra inspiration tonight. Tell us about the inspiration. You know, 
my grandma, she was a great influence in my life, you know, and she passed away at 10 on 08, you know, so I was just thinking about her all night, and, uh, you know, I think she really, she really was watching down on me, guiding me, you know, through, through everything that I did tonight, and, you know, I just was trying to go out there and play for her, you know, I just wish she was here to see, you know, just Louisiana Tech, you know, we just watched a lot of film, what they did to us last year, we watched that hit on, uh, you know, Gray Alexander, and Coach Matt just kept on replaying and replaying, and it just kind of made us angry a lot, you know, it really made us realize what this game really means. Big Wave then met with wide receiver Gray Greg Salas, who finished the night with 10 catches and 197 yards receiving, and freshman wide receiver Billy Ray Stutzman. Greg, I noticed in the first quarter, as the game was getting started, it, it seemed like um, Louisiana Tech um, defensive backs were kind of um, maybe getting overconfident or just kind of jawing with the receivers for Hawaii. Yeah, they definitely were a little mouthy, you know. As soon as I walked down the field, they were talking, you know. So, um, you know, it makes the game more fun, and, you know, I like when people do that. All the preparation we put into the season, all the, the receivers pretty much staying back for summer and coming here staying in summer school and going to uh, lifting every day during summer and getting out there pretty much every day and running routes and getting familiar with one another. I think all that's really paying off. This week coach just moved you from the right side to the left side. How is that adjustment handled uh, during practice? Well, it wasn't really too bad because, you know, in high school I played both sides and it just took me maybe, you know, a few routes to get used to the steps again. But after that, you know, it just comes like second nature to me. It's, uh, you know, no matter where I play, I think I know the plays and then I think after that it'll be all good. As far as you stepping in for Rodney Bradley, how do you see the offense so, together. It doesn't matter really who steps in. It's just if you know your, you know the job. I mean, and you execute. You know, no one can really stop this offense. I mean, you know, you gotta give it hats off to you know Moniz. I mean, he's been doing a hell of a job. On the defensive side, Big Wave caught up with all the hit makers on the night, including seniors Mano Silva and Jeremy Bryant, and juniors Richard Torres and Corey Paredes. Corey, in the last few games, it's been uh, publicized that you know you were the, the Iron Man on the defense. That, uh, tonight, the entire defense came out yeah. on fire. No, the entire defense came out pretty hard balling. I mean, Mona Silva had a breakout game. Richard coming on making plays. Oh, it was unreal. JB had a pair. The line was doing good. It was just overall a good defense first half and fourth quarter. Over the last few games, either due to injury or maybe due to what the other team was showing, there's been people swapping positions. But uh, after tonight's game, is the defense kind of finding its personality and, and, and getting everybody accepted? Yeah, well, the thing is, we have some athletic guys on the team. We could play the secondary or uh, in general, uh, like okay, nickel backer safety and stuff. So I think those season they're gonna be switching in and out because we just got we just got so many guys who can play and we want to use them. But I think overall, I think our, our defense is pretty set. We got some players on the field and I think we're gonna go with that. After Spencer Smith went down this season, the coaches moved you from nickel to safety. How was that transition? Been? It wasn't that tough of a transition. Just kind of smooth because a lot of times when we play the nickel position, we gotta play a strong safety. Also, we just you know we gotta rotate and for our blitzes and stuff. So it was a smooth transition. You know, it's just that losing Spencer Smith, you know, it's a big loss to our defense and those are big shoes to fill. Every week we do, we have turnover circuits. We start practicing with turnover circuits at least once a week. And um, our coaches always told us, you know, we got to capitalize on our opportunities. We had a lot of drop-in receptions last year, last week and stuff. So, you know, we really try to focus on every time once we get the opportunity, like make the most of it because it might not come off there, you know. In the last game, you were kind of uh, held back due to an injury. But yeah, tonight you came out strong, coming away with, with two picks. So how's the body? The body is sore right now. Uh, nah, my, my injuries is all right. Uh, I'm fine. You know, it was awesome. Uh, you know, we know the, the offense had a weakness in the, in the quarterback position and we just made reads and we just broke up the ball and got some interceptions. Jeremy, you came away with another pick tonight. How was it going against a team that runs an offense similar to Hawaii? First off, glory be to God, man, because I don't know how I got strength tonight. I was just so tired of fatigue. My hamstring was giving me problems all week, but uh, we just prayed on it. Umu, me, Barrett, and just prayed over it. But to answer the question, uh, it was just like practice almost. I mean, seeing the same type of routes, the same route selection, you knew what they were going to do if you watched film. And they have good athletes. I didn't expect them to be as fast as they were. They were fast. I didn't expect them to be as physical as they were. The um, Nas are really good team. We just beat. How's it looking with the defense gelling together as we start the wax season? I think it's good. Last week, I think we made some big time improvements. This week, we made some big time improvements again as far as we got more takeaways this week than we did last week. Interceptions. Um, so we're catching the ball more. We had a great half in the first half. Third quarter, we struggled a little bit. But fourth quarter, we came out and we closed it out as a team. Um, defense stepped up. Offense punched it in. Special teams kicked the field goal, and that's what we needed. Big Mahalo to photographers Mike Sullivan and Glenn Yoza for capturing all the sights and sounds on the night. A great back-to-back -back win at home for the Warriors as they prepare to hit the road on their way to try and tame the other Bulldogs in the whack, Fresno State. Kickoff scheduled for 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go Hawaii Warriors! I'm Pu'ukani of Pipelining Paradise Radio reporting for IslandSportsMedia.com, your ultimate island-style sports magazine.